Hey, hey. Hello. You just appeared on me. I was the only one. No, it's because I was, I'm, I'm working on being able to actually fix the screen sharing thing and see if like, ah. hello. Awesome. Hey. Hello. Okay, that should have fixed that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sometimes I can do screen sharing from here. Sometimes not. Hooray, hooray. Folks, give us a few more moments. We're waiting on more participants. Emily, we don't need quorum today, and it's also been a bit since we've done one of these. So yeah, I was, I'm glad you mentioned it because I was just going to jump on. All right, folks. Hello, everyone. Good day. We're going to go ahead and get started. As a reminder, CNCF meetings are part of the Linux Foundation. Normal antitrust notice and meeting logistics. You've made it. Awesome. We have several, many of our TOC members out on vacation um, or on holiday. So you get what we have here today in present. Our agenda, we're gonna run through the, the tag updates, but first we have a tag update update that we'd like to propose. Um, and then we'll provide some status updates on projects moving levels. Next slide. Okay, um, back one. There we go. So we've been going through the tag updates the way that we have for a long period of time. And I think that there's a lot of excellent information that each of the tags are sharing, but it's not always consistent across the tags and that's fine. Um, but what we wanna do is given the amount of activities that we're starting to shift over to the tags um, and the current health and sustainability of the tags and the work that they're doing, wanna introduce some small changes to this what we're looking for out of tag updates. I figure we can try this in September, see how it works, see if we're getting a lot of great information exchange from everyone and highlighting all of the great work that the tags are doing. 
Um, and if it works, great, we'll stick with format. If not, we can make changes, tweak, or go back to what we had. So the first one that I want to focus on is doing tag health updates. How is your workload? Do you have too much work? Are we asking too much of you? Do you have too many projects assigned? Um, are you looking to take on more work? How's your contributor activity? Are you, do you have a lot of contributors? Um, is the workload that you currently have being distributed effectively? Do you need assistance in that area? Um, what kind of support are you receiving? Is it good? Do you need more? Do you need more engagement from your TOC liaisons? Do you need less engagement from your liaisons? Um, and then any additional attention areas that um, where you need help, whether or not that's cross tag functionality, maybe CNCF staff support, something along those lines. Next slide. And then the meat and potatoes of it, really, the work that you all are engaged in. How, what are the projects that you've engaged with? What kind of engagement was it? Was there something specific that was interesting or noteworthy as part of that presentation or engagement? We hear a lot of presentations that happen, but I want to make sure that we're getting the really valuable details out of that so that we can either um, make other tags or other community members aware and engage with them or perhaps reach out to the projects directly if there's something of particular note um, that we're interested in. And also all of your working group updates. I know many of our tags have working groups. We'd like to get those updates from you all. And I think everyone's been doing that, but wanna make sure that's solidified here. What work you've done so far since the last update, anything that you currently have in progress that's ongoing and what you've got coming up. So a little bit more of that roadmap planning. So we have better visibility month to month on what you all are working on and have the appropriate opportunities to highlight and share that with the community at large and with our adopters and end users. And any topics that are coming up in some of your community discussion, we've had a lot of changes in technology over the past several years, and usually tags and the questions that come to you all are early indicators of upcoming trends, focuses, or concerns that um, different adopters or end users are experiencing at the time. So thought we would try this out for September and see how it goes. Does anybody have any immediate feedback or thoughts and opinions on this? Uh, Emily, um, again, thank you for going through this. I think it's very exciting. Um, do, is there a format or are we just adding uh, info to the slides? Um, is there a, can we maintain markdown that can be then, you know, on the tag repos as a status update that then get at, gets added to these slides or? I think that's oh. a good question. I think for right now, for September, while we're trying it out, we'll just do a template in the slide deck that kind of okay. outlines all these areas. And then depending on how successful that is, we might uh, switch over to Markdown or something along those lines. But awesome. let's, Thank you. let's yeah. keep that in mind moving forward because I, I like the automation portion of this as part of the tags regular work. Yeah, and you can also search on it, which makes it easier in the long run. So thanks. Yeah. All right, next slide. Tag storage. Hi, I work in an update from tag storage. So now we have a new tag storage co-chair, Rafael Spazoli from Red Hat. He is the main author of the Cloud Native Disaster Recovery paper and has been contributing to the tag for a while. We are very happy to have him on board. And we have two storage projects, Kwame Store and Xline, that recently joined the CNCF as sandbox projects. And our web paper on running data on Kubernetes is being reviewed. We are trying to wrap it up and get it published. And in recent tech storage meetings, there were presentations from Xline and Huami Store. We also had a presentation from Huami Chen on storage and sustainability. There was also a presentation from the Sandbox project, KA App. It's a backup and restore project. They also submitted an annual review. We will be reviewing the and new reports with the guidance from our TOC liaisons, Nikita and Matt. 
And we also have an upcoming presentation from Kenister, who is also applying for Sandbox. That's all from me. Fantastic. Um, are you all also going to send out the Cloud Native Disaster Recovery paper on the TOC mailing list? So that one, uh, we are trying to get a blog published. So I need to follow up because we did send that out to the CNCF staff. So, okay. um, so maybe for the for this other paper, which is not published yet, which is the data on Kubernetes. The database mm -hmm. patterns paper, paper we can send out to the mailing list and to get more reviews because the um, the cloud native DR one that's already published on our GitHub. We're just okay. trying to write a blog for that. Awesome. Nikita? Yeah, I just had a quick question about Belkin. Um, so do you know if they're still interested in applying for Sandbox? Because if I recall correctly, they, like I was looking through the notes, it, there was some licensing issues since they were a fork of an open source project under the Twitter GitHub org, uh, but it seems like it's no longer the case. So do you think they're still interested or would it help to like poke them to check? If uh, so I need to reach out for to, to them. They have not got back. Last time when they gave us a presentation a few months ago, they said they are interested. So let me reach out and get back to you on that. Um, just another quick question um, about the review on the white paper on database patterns. Are you looking for additional reviewers? And I was just like thinking a lot, like, do you think it might help if we tweet from the CNCF account for more outreach and asking for reviewers, especially from end users? Uh, yeah, so if we can get more people to review that, it'll be great. Yeah. If, uh, if there are other ways to reach out to more people. So I can definitely send it out, just send through the TOC mailing list, but there are, if there are other um, ways to get the words out. We did talk about it at, uh, in the last KubeCon, we did ask people to review, um, but if there are other ways, that would be great. Oh, so I think Amy just posted on chat about the social media channel where you can, Richard? Uh oh, okay. So we, oh, that channel. Okay, that's a that's a Slack channel. Oh, okay. I'm not aware of that. So sure, we try that. Slack. Just go ahead and drop on like the hey, please, like you know, amplify this thing. Like uh, yeah. that's a that's a great idea. I'm not aware of that. Okay, yeah, it's a good one. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions for tag storage? Okay. Next slide. Yes. Tag right. security. Uh, this is Pushkar. Uh, I'll be doing the update today along with uh, Andy. So first up, we have a chair transition. Thank you, Brandon, for all the work over several years as a chair, as a tech lead before that, as a member. Now he belongs to our long list of emeritus chairs. Some of them are, or are in the TOC as well. Uh, and I'm uh, lucky enough to replace him and take the baton forward. So a couple of updates on white paper version two. So there have been a uh, few translations that have already happened. Uh, two of them were merged in our repository yesterday. Uh, one is a Chinese translation and another is Japanese. Uh, there has been a lot of good feedback from the glossary localization teams for both of those languages on these papers. So that was great to see. Uh, there is one more that's in progress, uh, which is Spanish translation. And uh, we expect to publish a blog for both the Chinese and Japanese working with the original uh, translate translation authors uh, on the CNCF uh, website. Uh, Second update uh, on security assessments. Uh, we have created a project board or continue to use it in a much better way, uh, explaining where the different assessments are in terms of progress. So uh, there are there are two in progress. One is in backlog. There are nine which are blocked, away, which is which means that they are waiting for comment from the project maintainers. 
uh, and uh, we keep it open and ping them a couple of times before we can we'll move forward on that. Uh, there is an interesting note uh, for which I'll quickly pass it on to Andy on the NYU students uh, collaboration with CNCF. So Andy, why don't you go ahead? Thank you very much. We have had uh, a very kind offer from uh, Professor, Professor Justin Kapos of NYU Tandon Lab to bring some of his students into the security pals process. So this is intended to reduce the latency on getting a project to assessment. We often find that projects don't necessarily have everything they need to navigate those waters internally for the project team. Sometimes there's a bit of back and forth. So the security pals process is meant to assist them to get to a point where they can present to the tag, they can perform a self-assessment, and we can then compare and contrast our notes and move to a place where we can make recommendations to the project and back to the TOC. So this is very much in an exploratory stage at this point. Um, th this is here as a, as a proposal, not only for tag feedback, but, but also to, to the wider tag security group. And we'll put together a process whereby new projects are prioritized, self-identify their desire for assistance in this regard, move towards um, presenting and then generating the self-assessment. And then th that gets us to a place where Ideally, we, uh, we really churn through this backlog because we do have more projects in, in the backlog right now than, than we're comfortable with. Thanks, yeah. Jessica. And uh, the last update I'll say is uh, in true open source fashion of chopping wood, carrying water, uh, Andres, one of our tech leads, has been really amazing in the last couple of months, especially uh, clearing out so much of backlog of our issues and pull requests. And it just has made everything really sustainable for all of us to go forward. The number of issues have gone down dramatically that are open. Same thing with pull request. And he's continuing to do that along with uh, all of us uh, jumping in wherever needed. So thanks, Andres, a lot. Uh, that's it from Tax Security. All right. Uh, welcome, Pushkar. Uh, any questions for Tax Security? All right, next slide. Tag runtime. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'll provide the updates for tag runtime. Uh, we've had a lot of activity, uh, different projects, um, also with the working groups. So in terms of uh, presentations and, and uh, projects that have presented in our meeting, we have a, a project called KCP uh, presented in, in August 3rd. This is a Kubernetes uh, control, uh, Kubernetes-like control plane for managing cloud infrastructure. Uh, we also had a presentation from CraftKit. Uh, this is uh, unikernel tooling uh, that, that happened a few weeks ago. Keda is a project that it, I think a lot of you are familiar with. It uh, right now it, the graduation in, is in progress. I think uh, the, it's in public comment, or maybe I think it's uh, also the vote is out, um, but but it's not has, has not quite graduated. They're in voting, so you're good. In voting, great. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, in terms of uh, projects that graduated, we had Cryo and Kubeflow. So yeah, so we a um, couple of um, very um, popular projects and useful projects. Kubeflow now with the, all the machine learning hype. So it's good to see that. Yeah, we had a presentation from Slim Toolkit. Uh, this is a project that allows you to. This is in our last meeting. Uh, allows you to trim container images. In uh, in terms of uh, Kubernetes and workload workloads type of projects, we will have coordinator uh, presented on August seventeenth. Uh, this allows uh, to create quality of service for workloads. Another project called Kubebean um, helps with uh, cluster lifecycle management. Kubernetes um, will they will present on August thirty first. In Karmara allows it to do Kubernetes cluster management too. And uh, this project is currently in due diligence review. We have a TOC sponsor, that's Nikita. Eraser, it's also an initial due diligence review. 
uh, we did have a presentation from Cube Clipper, another Kubernetes management system. So a lot of different Kubernetes management systems. Tora Cube is a infrastructure as code uh, automation tool that we reached out to. And finally, we had a presentation from Wasm Cloud. Um, uh, project has actually uh, grown and uh, they've, they've had a lot of more contributions. So they're planning to go for incubation. And in terms of uh, tag runtime activities uh, for KubeCon North America, we're planning uh, a session and a space. We did have a, a space at the last KubeCon. EU was very successful. We had a lot of participation, so excited to uh, plan that out. And hopefully a lot of the folks participate. And, uh, and I think there, there have been a lot of conversations on sandbox reviews. Uh, so we're, we're getting ready to start doing that. Uh, so we, uh, the TOC members uh, in the community, are defining the process. So we're excited to to get that started and uh, help, get help from all the different folks with the sandbox review. So we we gotten a lot of um, uh, people interested in participating and helping out. Uh, in on our work groups, uh, uh, we have a few working groups: uh, container orchestrated device, the working group are the. We just created the GitHub um, CNCF tags uh, organization. So they're they're gonna get started with uh, migrating some of the work that they've been doing with uh, container container devices standards. So they will put in that there. So they, they're also excited about that. In terms of the WASM working group, so finally got created, the charter was created so, and they started to meet regularly. Uh, they're also very excited about WasmCon that's happening next month. And a lot of folks in that group are participating. In our batch uh, working group, they, they're working on um, uh, a document to uh, to describe some of the batch scheduling, high performance computing scheduling terms. And on the Edge IoT working group, they're working on a new white paper. It's um, the uh, ideal design patterns for H native principles. So the, the last work, uh, white paper was on H native principles. So this is more about ideal design patterns. And they're also work, looking at the intersection and working with the uh, WASM working group and uh, seeing how they can tie together with, with the edge. So there's a lot of overlap there. And finally, uh, we created another uh, working group uh, called the Special Purpose Operating System Working Group. Uh, uh, there, we got a lot of folks interested in the community from different um, projects. Rajas, who's on the call now, he's uh, leading that effort. Uh, so very excited to see that happening. Uh, a lot of different projects uh, in the space, like Bottle Rocket, Talos, Flatcar, Kairos. So uh, all of them getting together and, and coming up with a charter uh, to advance the community and advance the space. That's it for the updates. Um, happy to take any questions if you, anybody has any. Any questions for Tag Runtime? Um, I had a question, uh, Ricardo. Thank you again for uh, you know this level of detail. Really exciting. Uh, the KubeCon any um, space and session? I I would like to you know figure out if we could also collaborate somehow uh, from the Tag observability. Uh, is this something that you're working with the KubeCon organizers on getting space or how does that work? Yeah, you, uh, we can sync up offline uh, yeah, on yeah. Slack and uh, there's um, uh, with the CNCF basically. Yeah, so okay. Uh, okay. At, at the last KubeCon, I think a lot of the tags uh, had a dedicated space where you know they a lot of folks in the different working groups and community members uh, sat down and talked about their their work and talked about they they I mean some of them actually created an agenda you know of, of different presentations or, or or topics to talk about so it's kind of like an like an open room uh, to to talk about different things but, but yeah so but you're, you can say you're talking about the project meetings yeah yeah they're the they're, they're project meetings uh, essentially yeah but but there's some uh th there were a lot of tags that, that actually had that meaning um besides you know specific uh, cncf projects i see i see because i mean i typically have not we have not done that from tag observability but it would be great to do that across project you know meeting yeah um we do do you know obviously the projects themselves do 
do have project meetings. Uh, but I'll get more details from you again. That would be great to do at the tag tag level. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, and then I think there's also some other initiative to uh, get uh, all of the tag leads together in some other yep. um, time uh, slot. So, George yeah. is working on a tag meet and greet. And if yeah. you're not aware of that, there is a thread in the tag chairs channel. Awesome, sure. uh, Emily. Thank you for calling that out. And I'll I, make him come by and uh, do a <laughs> presentation on like. Good, uh, good. I think September, um, George will come by That's and talk good. about what's going on for a tag meet and greet. I mean, we usually do an informal, you know, dinner invite for everyone to gather up, but it's just that it would be nice to have a uh, slightly more organized space. <laughs> so thank you. For sure. Yeah. Any other questions for Tag Run Time? Okay. Uh, Ricardo, for that white paper around ideal design patterns for edge native principles, is there an open issue for that for folks that are interested in joining? Uh, I'll have to go back and check with the uh, uh, IoT Edge uh, working group oh, with okay. Kate, but I'll get back to you, uh, to you with that. But there, yeah, so if there isn't an issue, I'll, I'll actually ask them to create an issue. So it makes it easier to, awesome. to track. Yeah, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, next up is tag observability. All right. I think uh, there it is. You can see my slide. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, just a quick update from the tag observability. We've been uh, pretty, pretty, pretty busy um, on our work groups uh, where we have started focusing in on two specific work groups. Uh, the new latest one is the uh, query uh, language standard work group, which again um, was approved uh, in late May and uh, again has had lots of interest from the industry, uh, different end users, as well as vendors participating. Um, and uh, we have currently, uh, we're working on the use case and language descriptor descriptions. Uh, and the DSL designer interview questions uh, that is looking at, you know, what are some of the DSLs that exist today uh, in the form of query languages and also getting more feedback from um, architects who are uh, designing these DSLs, right, for, for different observability um, projects that already exist, such as PromQL or um, or uh, other vendor uh, query languages, such as ElasticQL and others. Um, so lots of excitement and again, uh, a lot of participation in these meetings uh, uh, and we are actually alternating them on the two Tuesdays uh, when the CNC, the tag uh, meeting itself is not <laughs> held. So we're pretty busy all, all through the month. Uh, the second uh, work group that has been ongoing for a while and is super key to actually um, continuing to have discussions, best practices, and build out around the observability of Kubernetes um, is uh, in, in progress. Uh, one of the things that we have done as we work very closely with many of the projects in the observability space, we've taken the project demo, the application that exists on open telemetry, which is a community uh, project within open telemetry, and taken that as an uh, baseline to be enhanced as an app to observe and fundamentally instrumenting that for Kubernetes infrastructure metrics tracing um, so that you know it can be used as a model for starting off instrumentation on your infrastructure um, and setup right so uh, uh, this this work group has been kind of working towards a more practical end goal which you know uh, end users can take and use. Um, again, there are some good first issues outlined, and um, we continue to, you know, get folks involved, uh, but would like to see uh, more folks involved in this process because, you know, today the community is kind of split across the Kubernetes project, uh, SIG instrumentation work group on the Kubernetes project itself, and then the tag work as well as the projects and observability. Right, so uh, again, having more cohesion there would be helpful. Uh, another call out uh, for the observability projects, and I love the idea that Pushkar, in, uh, you know, uh, introduced of tracking different projects and what state they're in with the project board. I've looked at the TOC 
uh, project boards. Thank you again. You know, they're super helpful. Uh, and we'll emulate that, uh, you know, on the tag uh, observability side also, where we can track and refer to the TOC um, project boards, uh, you know, it, through, through that. It's really a great way to represent, you know, status as well as communicate, uh, you know, what's in progress. Um, so uh, there's a question here that I had, and as you know, open cost is one of the cost observability projects which are under the observability domain. Cube cost is another one of them. Um, and I was curious as to you know whether these projects which are cost optimization observability, very key in the end user world especially, are uh, projects that we should have a special section for in the observability space. Uh, and, and I'd like to discuss a bit more, you know, offline on this, but it's a special, you know, type of projects, if you will, that, you know, border on cost optimization from an infrastructure point of view and also measurement, right? So they have different parameters that are associated with it, and I would like to have more clarity on what that means from a uh, review perspective, right? for, for uh, going through the incubation graduation process. Um, but nonetheless, Cube Open Cost is in review right now by the TOC and um, uh, look, look forward to helping on that. Um, meetings and highlights. Uh, we are deep in also in the midst of discussing KubeCon uh, prep and uh, also super excited for you know, the Chicago meetings coming up. Um, just just a couple of months ago, away, so not too not too far away. So I'm, uh, again, I'll sync up with Ricardo to uh, get more info and you know figure out how we can actually have and join up in the project meetings. Uh, we've also been maintaining a speaker series where we invite different experts from across the industry as well as on the different projects uh, who are work working and contributing to various projects. Um, especially in performance enhancements. Today we have a speaker, you know, series right after on Thanos performance enhancements. Again, um, this continues to be very popular and very informative as a bunch of talks. Uh, so uh, they are posted on our YouTube channel, but would like to figure out if we can actually do some more follow-up and maybe have a process for reiterating, you know, the availability of these uh, speaker series so that you know, more folks can leverage it through the CNCF groups. Uh, and last but not least, again, huge thanks to the TOC for, you know, continuing to uh, look at um, how the tags can help and uh, formalizing that process. Again, I hope that, you know, the tag uh, folks who have contributed for a long time can uh, get more involved and support the TOC. Uh, with that said, thank you again. Uh, and. Uh, any questions? Yeah, any questions for tag observability? Um, I had a quick question. Have you considered moving the repos under the observe case GitHub Arc to maybe the CNCF tax GitHub Arc? Uh, yes, we uh, we actually, uh, Nikita, started the um, um, second work group within the tag observability GitHub Arc, so we'll, we are taking a look at that for sure because it's easier for, you know, uh, the work groups to be consolidated there. Okay. Go, go um, on out. Thank you. I, I had a quick question, and this is probably more exploratory to do offline, but for the cost of measurements um, for open cost and other projects, similarly to that, it might be beneficial to uh, engage with tag environmental sustainability because I think there is some measurement and some observation overlap between the two. Uh, I know that they are working with the Falco project to explore um, better uh, transparency and its utilization of compute in cloud mm -hmm. and uh, cloud native environments. So that might be there might be an opportunity for cross tag partnership and collaboration on projects such as that. Cool, cool. I, I'll definitely I will do that, Emily. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, is there, uh, I'll just ping you on Slack to get a point of contact. Uh, Leo or Marlo would be good. Oh, Leo is there? Okay, yeah. cool. I can, I'll reach out to Leo. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right. Tag Network. All right. All right. We have um, two projects to talk about today. Um, 
So one just presented this last Thursday, uh, Spider Pool. It's um, proposed for Sandbox. Spider Pool is, um, well, it's a Kubernetes, Kubernetes underlay network solution. So it's um, it's about six years old, actually. It's been, it's been there for a while. They only recently brought it open. Um, the folks that are maintain it are, um, well, from Doc Cloud um, and are in a nascent way trying to build community and contrib external contribution around the project. It was started as an IPAM centric thing. Um, it is not accurate to call it another CNI, although, although it, it is a CNI and it, it does integrate with Weave and Calico if they're present. Uh, anyway, it's a sand sandbox pro uh, proposal. It's um, the thing that we focused on uh, most since last time I, I gave an update here. There is uh, another project um, to that's going to prop well, it's going to present next time in a couple of weeks. Easegress, um, which I was just learning about earlier today, and I on the call actually, so I didn't have it listed here. Uh, so we'll do a sandbox review of their, or we'll do, a, we'll have them present and keep some notes. Um, I will try to write up a bit more notes about Spiderpool in their presentation and how far along they are as a project. Uh, to the extent that that's helpful, as to, I'm assuming, like has the the TOC hasn't necessarily reviewed this one just yet. Not so, yet. So. I believe they're um, they're up for our next uh, sandbox uh review cycle for going through the new applications um okay. which i think is september time frame sometime in mid mid-september we have to figure out dates right now we've got it for september 12th i think it's probably going to move to the 26th um yeah but like september track for september that part is at least certain yeah well um i'll write up a couple of notes to the extent that it that it's helpful. Um, it it always is. Anytime a tag is reviewing one of the sandbox applications, any notes, observations, anything like that is always beneficial as the TUC goes through and reviews those applicants. Um, so Easegress is the one that we'll take a look at um, in a couple of weeks, and uh, and we are off to try to drum up some additional, well, some some additional activity. It's been a long time since we've invited like a Kubernetes SIG network or some of the sub SIG network, um, well, I don't know, working groups over there to come and present. Um, we haven't for a while reached out in general, soliciting the open community to come and use it as a forum for discussion and presentation. So well, it's time, a Amy, Amy, Amy's well aware that it's time. <laughs> anyway, it's time I for us to... It's great to see you here. I'm looking forward to being able to see like kind of new things happening for network. So, uh, yeah. So that's um. So we're we've got a couple of of other co-chairs at the moment who are um. Yeah, yeah. Who are only only so available, only so involved. I was um, chatting with um, Lynn Sun uh, about coming in as a co-chair as well. And so you, you all might see an, a suggestion about that soon. And so that, that will help in terms of getting some more activity going on. <clears throat> um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Lee, for the updates. Any questions for anyone? No? OK. Tag environmental sustainability. Hello. Um, so I think we, I, I talked about this also in the last uh, meeting. Um, we've been starting planning the Cloud Native Sustainability Week. Um, over the last month, we had two meetings and we have actually every two weeks now um, a meeting where we plan uh, the event. Um, if you're not aware, this is one week, uh, the second week of October, where we will have a lot of local meetups. So they're the community groups from the CNCF. And we reached out and we have right now, I believe, 27 local meetups signed up. So I think this is quite a big number. 
um, so we will see how many uh, will scheduled at the end. Maybe there will be some edits. I don't know, but um, I'm very excited about that. And we have next week uh, two meetings um, with the local meetup organizers to think about the event. So they are aware of everything which is going on um, and they can also give feedback. So we have enough time to change the event. Um, so a lot going on on this front. Um, our hope is to raise more awareness and also to route back, uh, for example, to the landscape document and to some other efforts where we need just more input or in general would like to understand where the industry is at and the community is at. Um, so I think this is a very interesting event. Um, the next thing is a small one. Um, last month we written down a, con a contributor maturity path. So this is a document, a markdown document, um, which we added to our governance. And this is just one thing which we link to new joiners if they're interested in how to mature as a contributor in the tag. It gives a lot of uh, step stones kind of um, where you can focus on if you're in this stage. And if you're interested in leading, for example, a working group, this gives like some, some guidance how to reach this point. Um, this has been very well received. I like we got uh, quite a few comments about this. Not sure. Like we will we will observe over time if if this um, document is of a lot of use. Maybe this can also be adopted by other tags, or maybe other tags have a similar strategy. Um, the next next thing is formation of the working group green reviews. Um, so this is also under discussion for quite some time. We had two additional meetings where we talked about the charter uh, and the charter is now under review. Um, actually, it's kind of at the end of the review cycle. There are just a few comments open. So maybe we will tweak it a little bit. But other than that, I think it's pretty finalized. And we had also a meeting with Falco. They, we invited Falco, one Falco maintainer, um, last, I think last meeting or the week, uh, meeting before, um, Falco is very interested in a partnership. So they're proposing to um, kind of kickstart, be the pilot project where we can assess and tweak uh, project reviews. So um, that's very, very great that they are proactive and that they are very interested. And I think um, with this partnership, we can define like a more general guideline, which we can also um, use to uh, review all other CNCF projects at some point. That's the goal. Um, but there's a lot of work to do. Um, very excited about that. The next thing, um, right, closer partnership with the Green Software Foundation. So are there are a lot of um, things in the Green Software Foundation which are kind of interesting to us. Uh, working on standards, for example, or they also propose in the meeting tomorrow, um, they will present us like a new framework, which can also be interested in to assess the su sustainability footprint of projects. Um, so there's quite some overlap um, and we uh, kind of are more, um, we, we are engaging with the Green Software Foundation from the start, but um, we are intensifying this a little more um, and also they are intensifying this from their side. So I think this is very good to um, partner more actively, um, for example, attend uh, meetings. So we are in a better sync um, and also collaborate cross uh, organizations and projects. Um, about the landscape document, um, there's been a couple of smaller additions to the landscape document. It's on the website if you're interested. Um, but it's still in a stage where we know there are gaps. So with the Cloud Native Sustainability Week, for example, but also with KubeCon and some other events, we hope to raise a little bit more awareness so folks can um, kind of route back and add their content and maybe um, like point out some gaps that we have. So maybe if you come across some areas which are kind of interesting, kind of new, um, in the discussion about environment sustainability, maybe you could give us a hint uh, or just add a pull request if you if you would like. Um, but this is on our minds to extend this until KubeCon. 
um, we want to cut like a new version kind of, or we want to show um, the new editions of the landscape document every KubeCon or so. Um, so that's one thing. Um, also, the working group comms. Um, we had a discussion about um, the state of the working group because it's um, in kind of in a strange state. Um, it's not; it's or already approved, um, but we need to more formally understand <laughs> maybe where the charter is at, even if like working group comms is kind of obvious where it's going. But still, we will kind of circle back a little bit and sit down for a week um, and draft that draft up a charter and then discuss the charter and start uh, engaging folks. Um, so we have like a more proper structure of the working group. Um, I think that's a very good change. And we are um, looking for folks who are interested in this kind of communication outreach uh, work. Um, so if you know someone would be great, um, but we will send more comms about this after we have the charter up or um, slowly before Kara is, Kara is in the lead, the tech lead. Um, so probably she will send comps about that. And then one thing which I uh, forgot to put on the slides is an area which is kind of important, uh, Kubernetes and environment sustainability. In our efforts, this is kind of not covered that well. I mean, it's part of the landscape document, um, but it would be great. Um, it's what, like one goal of us that we maybe write a white paper about um, uh, Kubernetes and environment sustainability at some point, maybe end of the year or um, when we um, have to set up right folks engaged and so on. Um, so mm -hmm. in the next week, we will reach out to folks, um, probably join some Kubernetes SIG meetings. Sounds and, excellent, yep. Leo, and a good activity to track on your roadmap for tag environmental sustainability. That's true, yeah. Any questions for TAG Environmental Sustainability? All right, next slide. TAG Contributor Strategy. Howdy, uh, I'm gonna do a little TAG teaming here. Um, uh, for the first part, just a quick roundup on progress of things. Uh, for mentoring, um, LFX is going to have term three for the year starting um, tomorrow, actually. Um, so, if you're involved with any projects that might um, uh, uh, that have mentorship projects, et cetera, uh, be aware of those deadlines. Uh, for governance, um, we've continued on the governance, the um, currently in development government reviews. Um, uh, we uh, did flat car according to the draft template, um, and we're changing some of the template. Um, I, we're changing some of the template um, uh, materials, uh, details, um, at which point we can actually submit that for approval by the TOC. Um, after that, the next step is to actually work on a self-assessment guide, um, I, the same as the, the security assessment. Uh, so projects can actually hopefully assess their own progress before it comes to a formal review. Um, uh, the other thing that we're actually working on, which is again, sort of combined governance and contributor strategy thing is a document on how to have a public roadmap and how to use the public roadmap as a way to con recruit contributors. Um, uh, that led to some work on our own roadmap. Um, and uh, Rian has been uh, hard at work and has gotten all of our open issues into um, the uh, project board for tag contributor strategy. Um, and then we're in the process of uh, going through those, um, removing the ones that are no longer relevant, um, assigning ones that are um, the, um, uh, but it's actually in pretty good shape right now. So overall, if you wanna know what tag contributor strategy is working on, you can look at the project board. Um, uh, we also held, uh, Dave uh, ran a June uh, maintainer circle on creating roles in your project, uh, facilitated by Paris Pittman, um, about creating uh, contributor roles as a recruitment tool. Um, but the exciting thing is that we have some new initiatives. And so I want to turn this over to Catherine. Um, yeah, so um, I mean, I'm, we mentioned that already last time, but a lot has happened since uh, then. Uh, so we do have a death 
uh, deaf and hard of hearing working group. And we have 17 members already, most of them, which kind of joined in the last few weeks um, due to our social media campaign and someone telling someone else and so on. And so we do have that little doc where we kind of capture why people are joining and who they are. And I invite everyone to check it out. It's really nice and see to see like all these different backgrounds and what motivates people to join and at least gives me more energy to kind of continue uh, this work. Uh, we had our very first official meeting last uh, week and our current focus is uh, coordinate, like continue to coordinate a social media campaign. So we get more people. Um, not everyone will be able to contribute. We just want to have a place where we can reach as many uh, deaf and hard of hearing people in our community. So for instance, if people want to go to KubeCon or something, we can organize a little bit. So we need people who work, but we also need people who just join the channel so we can reach them and maybe ask feedback for things. So not everyone needs to contribute. Uh, and we're also starting to organize our work, right? Like seeing like, what do we want to work on and so on. And we did have like our very first media appearance even before our first meeting, which is amazing. So thanks uh, to the CNCF uh, PR team uh, that got one of our members uh, spot on C CNBC um, uh, to talking about uh, the importance of um, accessibility. And then another working group, which is just in the forming. <laughs> so we uh, are working on a higher ed uh, working group, which will be uh, completely um, faculty-led, right? Um, so we have one professor, uh, Langdon White from Boston University, who is uh, the, the first lead <laughs> on this uh, initiative. And the goal is basically to create a cloud-native curriculum that is open source that anyone can um, can access, and also providing a platform for uh, professors around the world to connect maybe collaborate, uh, also mentor each other, you know, like maybe there are like some uh, universities that are much further along, have more resources, and then they could collaborate with uh, universities that have less resources and kind of mentor them on how uh, teaching those skills. Uh, so basically we wanna make um, cognitive education accessible everywhere, no matter where you uh, live and what kind of university you or where your university is located and so there is already a solid program outlined so Landon has done a lot of work so if you I think the um, higher ed is linked to that issue you can see that uh, it's um, yeah very great like the, the whole idea is really good and very uh, thought through so check it out and right now the current focus is really recruiting faculty members uh, from different uh, universities around the world so uh, we're also doing a, some a social media campaign there because that's like how it's the easiest to uh, reach people. So uh, look out for those and please share because uh, you may have faculty in your uh, network, even if you don't know it. And same thing with the deaf and hard of hearing. We're continuing to do that. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Any questions? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lee, go ahead. I, I lost oh, my job. Well, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, Catherine, there is well, there's a, a cloud native playground that's been part of the one of the working groups in Tag Network that is intended to be used for a few different things, but one of them is as a training platform for people who are uh, learning Kubernetes, not just Kubernetes, but any of the CNCF projects. And so, um, I wonder if that would be of help to this initiative to the higher ed working group. So I'll, I'll go mention it, maybe point out some yeah. details about it. Yeah, if you could like maybe just um, share the link. Um, again, right now there is just the concept and then we start, need to start creating, but again, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are lots of resources out there and it's just like maybe taking things here and there and then building that curriculum that makes sense for academia, but like information is out there, so. Uh, if you can share the link, I'll share that in the channel. Thank you. Hello, Lina. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Catherine, thank you again for going through these work groups. Pretty exciting. Um, on the higher ed work group, again, uh, it's great to see Langdon White's work in, you know, in kind of charting out the curriculum initially. But um, I'm also curious about whether, you know, given that uh, there has been a lot of effort with open source, uh, you know, initiatives uh, for learning and just introducing different 
programming languages as well as other projects you know in in the past into universities if the this work group will intersect and leverage some of those because you know typically large projects whether those are linux distributions or um you know other apache uh, core projects have had education initiatives uh, you know with the universities so writing or collaborating with them uh, on in in this new generation of technologies and open source might be a useful thing because again reinventing the yeah. same efforts you know in every in in silos doesn't help yeah well the idea is like we have some one professor who joined as well and then who has already a curriculum right and yes, said, like, yes. I'll donate that and it's like well that's a great work uh start right, right, like, right. Like, uh the more people collaborate and build it the better it will be so it's like yeah let's start with that and then like I mean like the more people who have already done their own curriculum out there and join us and then we can make like the take the best out of it and create so that's ideal right so yes. and also I think there are other initiatives there is an AI or something data one uh, that is also from the Linux Foundation that I saw where there is so this has been happening so it's not the first right, initiative right. Like that. so uh, the idea is like once we have like a solid group of uh, faculty members uh, is like reaching out to these groups and maybe tell, ask them like uh, their experience and, and advice and we definitely don't want to be doing this as a silo so repurposing everything that's out there for sure and then also learning from other groups who have done this before and so we can don't do the same pitfall so we learn from there right, right. you know so uh, definitely something we want to do but yeah. I mean I think maybe the CNCF can help there in terms of just you know uh getting the word out because I think that uh that's the first step to folks just you know getting more involved yeah first uh, we need to find okay. the group right like we need to find right. we have Biden, we have someone else as well and then it's like but that's not enough and we want yes. as well to be sure we don't have like five professors from the United States right we want to have some people in Europe and in Northern America and in Latin America and in Asia so we want to have like a very diverse yeah. group of individuals working on this um so that's very important yes excellent so awesome. Any other questions for higher education and tech contributor strategy, just drop them over in their Slack channel. We've got one more tag in four minutes. Uh, tag after livery. Apologies for the shorter time frame today. Anyone from tag after livery on the call? We might not have anybody today. Okay. Um I'm oh. 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 Josh is here. <laughs> um, and I don't know where Alois is. Um, I know there's still a um so the chair elections, I know one went out for a tech lead, but the chair elections are still um we're still waiting for people to confirm, I believe. Because I know uh Josh is up for chair um and others, so I'm not sure. Where that's at again i wasn't prepared to speak about this so hey thanks um we have the working group the working the platforms working group has been really active and there was another um working group meeting last thursday um so please uh, go review the working group notes and please join the platform working group um, I don't have an update on the artifacts. Um, okay, well, I'll be prepared next time in case one of them don't show up. So um, that's the update. <laughs> no worries, Karina. Um, for folks that have questions for Tag App Delivery, uh, go ahead and drop them over in the Tag App Delivery channel. And Justin had just posted in chat that he's working on the loose ends for chair elections. Um, real quick on projects applying to move levels, uh, apologies that this content is not recently up to date and looks like there's a few things that were inaccurate or placed in the wrong area. Um, but what we're working on within the TUC is providing better transparency through our project board. So there is an incubating and a graduated um, moving levels project board, and I'm currently working through um, 
identifying state changes and statuses for all of the TUC issues and PRs that we have and all the work that we have before us to include a calendar so that folks understand where the TOC's work is currently being distributed or focused throughout the year. So stay tuned for more changes on that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, TOC members with content on screen or not reflected here um, that are sponsoring projects, do you all have any updates? Um, I can talk about Flatcar and Kalmada. So both of them, like their opt interviews are done. I just need to take another pass of the due diligence and they should be moving to TOC internal review soon. So if there are no blockers, then we might also, like after the internal reviews, then we might move to public comments soon. Okay. Anyone else? Um, so, so for the cryo party, it's not put here, it's already done for okay. graduation. And also there's another party for um, cloud events, uh, which is also not here. Yeah, um, it's just started. Yeah, I'm the TOC sponsor for that. Okay. All right, then. Any questions? Fabulous. Um, real quick on the update for Sandbox annual reviews, you should be receiving an email notification today on next steps for the tags. I'll also post it in the tag chairs channel. Um, we've tried to keep it super simple, uh, but we're fully expecting that after this first go around, we'll have a, quite a few changes and then we'll formalize the new process with the PR to the TOC repo. So please uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks you. Yeah. Bye.